This week, I wanted to talk about something that you actually have to ask a photographer about. It's not something you can see from their gallery, and that is how they retouch their photographs. Now, when you're using your cell phone, unless you've got it set on raw photography, it's going to create a JPEG image. And what the phone is going to try to do is enhance the image the way it thinks it should be enhanced. Um, pulling the colors out a little bit, changing the contrast, maybe changing the brightness, those kinds of things. Now, not getting into the differences between uh, cell phone photography and uh, taking photography with an actual camera, we're just going to talk about retouching itself. Now, when I take pictures, I take them in a raw format. What that means is the image has more detail to it than can be picked up with the human eye. So what that means in the image is the image is going to have to be retouched. This is a process of going in and enhancing the photograph. Now, when I do a retouch of let's say the fall foliage ones that I've just done, there are certain things that I have to do about taking out haze in the sky, enhancing the colors, things that are specific to that type of photography. But when you're taking a portrait of a person, to me, I want everybody to be able to look at that picture and say they know that person. I don't want to change the way you look. That said, there are certain photographers who will remove moles from the face. To me, the only thing that should be removed is something that's transitory, like a pimple. If you have a blemish on your face that wouldn't be there on another day, then there's no point in having it in the photograph. If you have a mark on your face, as I do, it's part of who you are. And that should be in the photograph. Another thing that some photographers do, um, I actually heard one photographer say he does this on all the pictures because, of course, every woman would want this. He uses the lens correction to bring in the sides of the person, making them look thinner. It, 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 if it's done in a minor way, it can still look natural. And he's only talking about a couple of percent that he does it. It squeezes the sides in. So it gives you an unnatural length and an unnatural thinness. The problem I have with that process is it's not the person. If the lens caused an issue, now you might say, what, what kind of an issue could a lens cause? If you've ever seen a fisheye lens, it is distorted around the sides. Well, every camera lens, even if it has a glass face to it that's straight across, which they're hard to find, usually if you see that straight glass on there, it is the... Um, not the camera, but a cover over the lens itself. I mean, even if you look at the back of your smartphone, you know, take it up, look at the back of it. If you look in at those cameras, you can see that the lens is curved. That curvature causes distortion. So most of the time when you shoot, and when I shoot in Lightroom, there are profiles to remove that distortion. And what it basically does is flattens the image out. There's usually not a lot of distortion, but there's some. And that's dependent upon what kind of lens you use. The smaller the number, it's like a 10 millimeter lens, for example, gives you a wider view. And that wider view comes at a cost. It's curved. As you go up to the higher numbers, they're usually not as curved because they're zooming in and they don't cover as much of an area. 
if you think about it from perspective of what are you looking at and you take your vision, if all you could see was straight ahead, there's no distortion. As you know, your eyes are, are curved. The eyeball itself is curved. So is the lens in the eye. But if you can see around the sides, you get that distortion. And that's that curved view that the lens provides that then has to be corrected by profile. Well, you can take that and go the other way with it and actually use it to squish the image a little bit. Now, it's very hard for you to look at a photographer's portfolio and see if they do that. It's more of a question for the photographer. And honestly, some photographers won't show you their before and after shots, um, before retouching and after retouching. I do it for the simple fact that I like to show people how to do retouching in my style, which, as I said, is very subtle. I like to bring out three-dimensionality in the photograph. Um, if you go on YouTube and take a look, there's a uh, ball that starts off as a circle, but just by shading it gives it that three-dimensional look. That's kind of what I try to do with a person's head in a photograph or in their body, is try to separate that out. One thing you can't get usually, you can't get a real version of it, it's a fake one, on smartphones is bokeh. And bokeh is that narrow depth of field so that the person is in focus, but the background is out of focus. And the fake ones can do a okay job, but they don't do as good a job as having a proper lens that allows you to get that depth of field. If you're able to shoot with a lens that allows for that depth of field, it does that kind of shading magic for you. It gives you that three dimensions to the image. Failing that, and sometimes you have to do it anyway, and it depends upon the lighting, etc., is you may need to just highlight things on a person's face just to give that three dimensionality back to it because a lens has a tendency to flatten out the image as we talked about from the profiles it's going to flatten that image out the other thing that sometimes is done is there are programs that will smooth the face add makeup change the lips, change the eyes, change the size of the eyes. I've seen them. The, I'm not a fan of any of that technology. If your makeup needs a touch up, that's what the makeup artist is for. If for some reason there is something that got missed, like a little extra mascara off to the side of the eye, for example, that can be removed during this retouching process. But I want people to see you. I don't want people to see a version of you that's my opinion. And that's what a lot of retouch photographers can do. I'm not saying they all do it, but It can get to the point where they're thinking about things from the perspective of what they feel is an appropriate um, view of a person, what a person should look like, as opposed to what the person does look like. I'm always in the camp of, I want to show you as you, because that's the important part to me showing off my skills on retouching or how I changed your lip color or uh, made your eyes sparkle or anything like that is not the type of retouching that I'm interested in, nor that I want to do. I will correct things that uh, are transient, as I said. I will correct things that were just a trick of the light, like a shadow that's out of place. 
um, in those kinds of minor adjustments that don't change your shape or change your appearance in any way. Unfortunately, it's not something you can tell from a photographer's gallery. It's just something you have to ask about. That's what I got for you this week. I hope you have some value from this uh, little podcast about retouching. And I will talk to you guys all next week.